meditate upon the divine spirit dwelling in our hearts let us sit erect keep the eyes closed let the mind be drawn inside let all types of thoughts be kept aside for the time being let the whole attention be focused on the divine light who is lighting the whole universe who is the light of knowledge who destroys all ignorance which is binding us causing all types of miseries in the world the source of freedom <coughs> reaching home we become blessed with immense peace and tranquility let us prepare our mind let us take the mind along with us for these few moments let us be satisfied to be with the divine light praying for the well peace 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 be unto all om stapakaya ca dharmasya sarva dharma swarupine स्थपकाय चर्म सेवधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतारवरिष्ठा रामकृष्णा ते नम असतो मसदमसो मोतिर्गम असतो मसदम तमसो मोतिर्गम मृत्योर्मातिशाशाति लेट अस ऑफर अवर सेलिटेशन टू श्री रामकृष्ण द एम्बॉडिमेंट ऑफ ऑल रिलीजन्स let us pray to him to lead us from unreal to the real to lead us from darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge to lead us from death to immortality peace 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 be unto all this peace chant contains most sublime message of the upanishads 
ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೇಮ್ ಟು ಶೋ ಅಸ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ದಿ ವೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಚೀವಿಂಗ್ ಅವರ್ ಗೋಲ್ ಹಿ ಕೇಮ್ ಟು ಶೋ ಅಸ್ ದ ವೇ ಥ್ರೂ ಡಾರ್ಕ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಗ್ನೋರೆನ್ಸ್ he gave the light of spiritual knowledge whoever comes in the orbit of this light of spiritual knowledge will surely cross his life the darkness will no more trouble him the darkness no more exists for him who is blessed with the light of this spiritual knowledge given directly by shri ramakrishna so he has come to lead us literally from our worldly ways to spiritual ways he literally gave a turn to our approach he fixed the goal and he stood as the living guide for all the spiritual aspirants of the world so whoever reads the gospel he must see the divine light and shri ramakrishna worshiped the divine mother the whole creation is under the hands of the divine mother nobody can go away from this creation without the grace of the divine mother so shri ramakrishna came and propitiated the divine mother he showed us the way how to look this world this whole world is considered as the abode of the divine spirit vishwatma so this whole universe is the body of the divine spirit that means the whole world is consecrated so shri ramakrishna takes us from that standpoint of view when we are near the mother why should we worry for anything at all mother is there mother is there to take care of everything and she does it she knows in what manner she had to look after her children and if we just look into the divine mother she would be all the more graceful and she hugs the children oh this child is coming to me probably she needs something so shri ramakrishna showed how to pray to the divine mother how to pray to the divine spirit how to concentrate and meditate one step we should be able to put onward nine steps god will approach us he is putting it in a figurative way in a relative sense just to explain the phenomena 
how we are able to come nearer and nearer to Sri, to the Divine Spirit. And if we hold on <coughs> to the spiritual message of Sri Ramakrishna, immortality is granted. We have nothing to worry about liberation. It is taken care of by Sri Ramakrishna. So this peace chant, Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityorma Mritangamaya Om Shanti 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 So this is the theme of the Upanishads and how Sri Ramakrishna came and literally fulfilled all these prayers. Just if we sit in the huge ship of this incarnation, Sri Ramakrishna, the ship automatically takes us away to the other shore. Last time we have read certain passages. Master Mahashay, how he was greatly influenced. His whole personality was given a kind of treatment by Sri Ramakrishna. When he came to the Dakshineshwar temple garden, many surprises were waiting for him. The first surprise was the remarkable serenity and the remarkable simplicity and the remarkable divine glory manifested through the personality of Sri Ramakrishna. He was literally in raptures, raptures. All the hairs on his body stood an end, feeling immense joy as if he was in the spiritual heaven. That was the first surprise. It churned his whole being. He became aware, as it were, of the reality behind this changing world. The second surprise he felt The divine vibrations had tremendous cooling effect on him. He felt peace inside. He wanted it very much. But he did not know how to get into that. That was given here by Sri Ramakrishna. As soon as he stepped into the place where Sri Ramakrishna sat, he was with full peace. And another surprise was, hitherto he had the impression that nobody could be great without the formal education. 
no nobody could ever dream of proper intellect without the education that is got through schools and colleges which we normally mean by studying books etc etc no doubt they are all true but then here is a person who did not have any kind of formal education but who was the storehouse of wisdom full of wisdom he acquired that supreme knowledge by which he could know everything then again this has been stated in the upanishads by the rishis thousands of years ago why are we aspiring for this education which is not helping you towards realization of the truth aspire for the divine knowledge try to acquire that by some means once you get it you will be getting everything <coughs> that is what shri ramakrishna did practice in his life and authenticated all these upanishadic teachings in his life another surprise i am felt tremendous attraction for the first time he is seeing shri ramakrishna in that first meeting itself he is feeling that irresistible attraction towards shri ramakrishna that was remarkable shri ramakrishna has become the divine magnet any body stepping inside or coming in touch with shri ramakrishna would be drawn without any effort he felt the same experience nobody could go without being drawn to him and nobody would go without enjoying peace and joy and for the first time he is seeing the tremendous love coming forth from shri ramakrishna which is more than millions of the loves exhibited by the mothers it is infinite love without barriers and this is pacifying the whole personality of master mahashay and that pure divine love was expressed in a most wonderful way when master mahashay was about to take leave shri ramakrishna told him very tenderly very affectionately come again come again master mahashay was completely overwhelmed by this experience overwhelmed so so far we had studied last class and this is my observation after going through this nectar the whole gospel is full of nectar it is for us to sip that nectar and become blessed well we have all come to shri ramakrishna we are all trying to think and act according to the teachings of the master he is always ready to help us in so many ways this is one important way this vedanta society meant for whom 
it is for you people why don't you utilize it to the maximum extent possible for your spiritual benefit you must come here for spirituality nothing else strike off everything else out and out you wanted spirituality so here is a place let us go and take bath in the spiritual waters of shri ramakrishna this is meant for that this is meant for meditating upon thinking again and again trying to understand the deep significance of the teachings of shri ramakrishna to become more and more humble that's the way to get into this way of spirituality every one is entitled to take the spiritual path never complain that we are householders we have got so many problems no use of giving that big list no use enough of that instead of thinking about the those list think in other way what i am doing today how far i have thought good thoughts in my mind how far i have been able to practice some of the teachings given by shri ramakrishna how far i am coming closer to him how far let us think in that line we will be saved from all terrible situations everything will be taken care of by the shri ramakrishna we are nothing to worry so total surrender that's very important that's very important so i had talked about some of the important aspects of the divine name how it is very efficacious how it is very powerful how shri ramakrishna himself day and night would be calling on the divine mother oh ma oh ma every now and then he would sing on divine mother he had a wonderful voice he could sing and sing we call it nada brahman brahman in the sound form that was the idea of keeping the names of the divine to our children somehow we must be able to recall the divine name somehow rama krishna christ buddha at least by recalling that name at some point of time you will be able to come inward that was the idea not to forget the divine in the midst of our worldly activities full of tension and so many things but what we are seeing today they think it is derogatory to keep the name of the divine they put all sorts of names to their children sometimes very ridiculous carrying no meaning at all sometimes they put the name of some stars they want to remember that film star rather than the divine name so how can you expect peace how can you get rid of bondage if you don't take proper steps at the right time it is the responsibility of the parents first and foremost to live the life the children will follow automatically you must provide whatever that is good and best in you there ends your responsibility then it is for the child to develop in its own way so we must understand all these points so we must be very careful in fact in this context i would like to tell in our indian tradition there is nothing like secular everything is spiritualized even starting from the conceiving of the child in the womb can you imagine
Suppose the couple wanted a child. It is clearly stated in the scriptures given by the rishis who had foreseen everything. They would say, good. It is good to have a good child. But then you must have some discipline. You live, you follow some disciplines this way for a particular period of time. Then the effect of that discipline would be found in the would-be born child. So everything is taken care of, step by step. And after the child is born, even when frequently in order that we may remember the Divine Name more often, more often, because the tendency of the mind is to forget the Divine. So, we must make our mind strong so that it doesn't go down. That's the important thing we should remember. And Divine Name has got all the powers. Only we must take it up and try to repeat with sincere love and devotion to the Divine Lord. He will provide you everything, whatever you want. Be satisfied whatever God has provided you. That's a great spiritual quality. Santushto ye na ke na chit. Lord Krishna tells in the Gita, Who is my devotee? He who is satisfied with whatever he has got. Santushto ye na ke na chit. So let us develop our spiritual personality. Let us prepare the ground, the mind is our ground. At the moment there are so many pebbles. Remove all those pebbles. Clean the mind. Then sow the seed of the Divine Name. It grows wonderfully well. Now the point is this. Sri Ramakrishna himself has uh, explained about this uh, suffering on many occasions. The first cause of uh, suffering, because he did tremendous uh, spiritual practices before his realization. Tremendous! It is really surprising his body survived. It would have been busted out. So, you must know that Kundalini power, the spiritual power is in every one of us. When it is aroused, it has got tremendous reactions on the body. Tremendous. In fact, Sri Ramakrishna himself was feeling terrible burning all over the body. He could not find out in what way it could be relieved. He would go and immerse himself in Ganges. But afterwards, Bhairavi Brahmani, who came, she did something. She knew, she said, no, no, you are nothing to worry. This is because of your spiritual realization. These things are coming up. The body, because of this tremendous uh, activity of the mind, it was found in the body in the form of reaction. Though outwardly Sri Ramakrishna was suffering in the ordinary sense of the term, in the real sense he was not suffering at all. He was always cheerful and when people would come he would talk hours and hours. If a man is really suffering, can he speak that way? Simply will lie down. The second reason was Sometimes these things will keep the mind of the divine person on the level of the world. Otherwise their mind, they won't come down at all. 
it will be always in the highest state it will be in the samadhi state it won't it won't like to come back why should it suppose i am deep sleep i don't want to be disturbed in sleep suppose i am deep sleep somebody comes and pushes me up i feel annoyed what i had a tremendous wonderful sleep i had this fellow came and disturbed me that means you won't like to be disturbed at all in that uh, deep sleep state without dreams i am talking about then what to speak of this divine realization you are you are immensely peaceful and joyful why do you want to come to this cage of this body but shri ramakrishna had the mission he had to give this spiritual message to the whole world otherwise how could the people know so in order to keep his mind on the level of this world this suffering came there is another reason shri ramakrishna would receive some of the uh, sins committed by the devotees in order to purify them in order to bless them in order to show grace on them he would receive all their impurities and he would burn them so those impurities are burnt in the form of suffering in fact i don't know probably you will come across in the great mass you will have that episode also mathur babu's wife fell sick by dysentery it was so acute many doctors came and gave treatment there was no sign of recovery she was becoming more and more weak and weak the point was reached that everybody was afraid of that she might pass away at that point patru babu came running to shri ramakrishna he begged the master to cure that dysentery he would say oh master my wife is terribly suffering without your grace without your intervention nobody can save her the doctors have lost hope any moment she may pass away i am here to serve you it is my privilege to serve you and i am doing but if my wife passes away i feel completely disheartened i will not be able to do the service in the same way in which i am doing now in so many ways he began to appeal and appeal and appeal finally shri ramakrishna said all right please go by the grace of the divine mother she will be all right that was the that was how shri ram krishna would always say he there was no difference between him and divine mother they are one and the same he was so free from egoism he would always say everything is mother by mother's grace it will be done it would be done so when mathur babu went back with this spiritual medicine he saw his wife was slowly recovering within one week she became completely normal but afterwards what happened because of that shri ramakrishna had to suffer months out of stomach trouble several months he had to suffer and he himself tells that because i withdrew the cause of uh, suffering to madhur babu's wife so i had to burn out that so my body had to suffer for it so like that there are so many ways of uh, giving uh, explanation to the suffering and another thing is another very important point we should remember if the suffering comes 
how do we act upon suffering is only another phase why am i not bad why should i be bothered about that i am not the body i am the eternal self because of the law of nature sometimes the body is sick sometimes the body is good it's all right let ha- let things happen according to law of nature but i know who i am and i am satisfied with what i am i am eternally peaceful and i am eternally happy that's it so even when the suffering comes shri ramakrishna would never stop uttering the name of the divine mother that's the point so sukha dukke same krutva labha labho jaya jayo shri krishna says this sukha dukkha happiness and misery they are all very natural in the life but you must maintain your equanimity in all these different states that is the spiritual quality that he came to demonstrate i will not be disturbed by the sufferings he had the power to cure cancer but he did not apply that power he could have prayed to mother shri ramakrishna who prayed to mother to cure the disease of the madhur babu's wife could he not pray for the mother to cure his own cancer it was possible but he didn't want to do that he didn't want to give importance to the body he d- he didn't want to lower the mind to the body level he didn't want to say that uh, look this is my body please cure it he didn't want to say that this is not my body everything is mother's it is mother's mother's let her do whatever she wills i will not ask for it that is the supreme renunciation supreme master of renunciation shri ramakrishna so he came to show us that there is one famous incident you know naga mahashay if you have not read please read that book fantastic life of naga mahashay a great devotee of shri ramakrishna very great devotee when he would take prasadam he would not only take the prasadam he would eat even the leaf also to that extent his devotion was going on once he came to shri ramakrishna to see when he was uh, down with cancer in kasipur garden nagmasha came very near and he inquired about how the master was doing the master wanted to test him well look i am suffering this throat sore is there not curable what can be done do you have any medicine for that he was a doctor dr nagmasha then nagmasha says well if you permit me i will take this disease can you imagine he was ready to take and shri ramakrishna knew that nag mahashay had that power he could take up the disease of shri ramakrishna and suffer himself and get relief to shri ramakrishna he was ready to sacrifice his life for the sake of the master but then master stopped him no i know you just to test i ask this question please don't do that he prevented him he shri ramakrishna wanted everything to go in a natural way he didn't want to apply spiritual power for all the things which are going on it is for us to analyze and separate ourselves from all these things and how to live in this life amidst all this chaos so many situations difficult circumstances they do come then you must maintain your spirituality under all such circumstances it is to show that shri ram krishna suffered he suffered for the sake of humanity why lord christ had to suffer 
Why he was why was he crucified? He was a embodiment of love and compassion. He was full of powers. He could have very easily prevented those people to do such things, but he never did it. Why? He had that special spiritual quality called in Sanskrit Kshama. In fact, last week I gave that, I spoke about the subject in the Ganges. Kshama, the forgiveness. Forgiveness. He is not disturbed by anything. Let anything happen. That's it. So to set the ideal, to set the ideal for us, to set the mold for us, Sri Ramakrishna lived that way. One can be human, at the same time one can be divine. So this combination of humanness and divinity, that's what we see in Sri Ramakrishna. If somebody was in trouble, if somebody passed away, if he came to know of it, he would shed tears. I am a human being. I am not a dry monk. Sri Ramakrishna would say like that. But at the same time, he would transcend his mind. He would transcend. So we must learn these things. First of all, we must thoroughly study all this and how the direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna, each one of them, how they suffered? They suffered because of their love towards humanity. They suffered because of the Master's love to them and their love towards Master. So that is how I see this suffering. Sri Ramakrishna is the model. The model should be perfect. And so, in order to give the perfect uh, idea about renunciation, Sri Ramakrishna has shown that life. Even being married, how both Sri Ramakrishna and Sri Sharada lived the life of purity and perfection and they did not get down to the physical level at all. It doesn't mean that uh, everyone will have to be in that state. Then again Sri Ramakrishna gives the solution that good, we have given the mold for you. After having one or two children, you live like brother and sister and devote whole time for your spiritual development. So like that Sri Ramakrishna has said and about the needs uh, it is true when we stay in the home we are pulled down by so many things and we have to act upon and uh, we are forced to do certain things quite correct but then if you have the spiritual attitude you will not be caught in the name of doing your duties or in the name of uh, attending on your needs. You must be very careful. You should not be caught. It's a kind of uh, illusion that I am doing these things, I am doing that. But as long as I am identifying with these things, I am bound to suffer. I can't expect peace until and unless I am able to disassociate with the things, dissociate with the things. That is why the philosophy of non-attachment is given in the Bhagavad Gita. You do everything wonderfully well, but don't be attached. That means what? Don't be caught in the mesh of doing the things. That's what Sri Ramakrishna is warning. There's a fine 
passage in the gospel advice to householders how the householders should live there are people and people there may be some people a b c d living like that but why should i imitate them why should i say oh those people are able to come only in the weekends so if i go daily to the vedanta society it is not proper what the people will think why this guy is going every day so that means he wants to imitate he also should come only in the weekend why that kind of imitation if i think it is a right thing to do immediately i should do it and sri ramakrishna himself suggests that renunciation should be practiced even if he is a household it is internal renunciation what is the meaning of renunciation it means the mind aspires for the divine and nothing else the mind is attached to the divine i want sri ramakrishna i am doing everything for his sake and when i am trying to spiritualize my duties etc my priority is for developing my spiritual personality not to run after the things of the world that is the way so unless we are careful and watchful we may think that what we consider duty may not be conducive to lead you towards liberation what i mean to say is there are people who say my duty it is my duty to go to the office i am getting money he is giving salary to me otherwise who will look after my wife and children so i must go and work there so must my first priority is to go and do the job of the person and the room i am working so his conception of duty starts from that point but then what about your duty towards god nobody thinks about that who gave you this birth here how could you get this body without the god's grace so why not we consider that's also as a duty the first priority must be given to our devotional practices and do the rest of the things whatever you want but our attention and focus must be on our spirituality on the divine do everything in the name of the lord and offer everything to him if you have that attitude you will not commit any wrong things in your life and you will not injure any body and you will not be disturbed true sometimes if you stick on to spiritual values you may have to pass through some difficulties that is a test exactly that is a test when the spirit when the difficult circumstances come are you still able to pursue the spiritual path even shri ramakrishna's father kshudi ram had to pass through terrible difficulties he had to live his own home with wife and children with nothing because a false suit was filed against him by the landlord by a rich man of the place because kshudiram did not go and gave a false witness which that wealthy man wanted so he became angry and he filed a false suit against kshudiram the father of shri ramakrishna and he bribed the judge and the order was passed in favor of that wealthy man as a result kshudiram's own house and his landed property everything was taken away by that wealthy fellow he had to go out 